All right, today's video is going to be on the Vatican as a sundial. So, why is the Vatican the largest sundial in the world? And also, another question is why is there an Egyptian obelisk in the center of that sundial? So, that question is interesting. There is said to be 22 Egyptian obelisks outside of Egypt, and 13 of them are in Italy. One of them is in Rome, right in the center of the Vatican, St. Peter's Cathedral. And St. Peter's Cathedral looks something like this from the sky. Looks a bit like a big key. But anyway, right in the middle here is an obelisk. And this is due east. So it's definitely aligned with the solar year. Um, so when they built this structure, of course they knew this, and you have to ask yourself why. Why is Christianity and the foundation of Catholicism and Christianity, Rome, tracking the sun and the stars? So this is the obelisk here, and this is St. Peter's Cathedral from the sky. And you'll see these, these markings on the ground that go like this. And there's actually another mark right here. It goes right through the middle. And what these are doing is they're tracking uh, the cardinal points of the year, the four sacred days, um, which would be over here where this arrow points would be, uh, I believe, uh, Easter. So it would be March 21st, March, here. And this is actually um, a representation of the Cross of Constantine, which is also called the Key Row. So it looks like this. The Cross of Constantine is this P and this X. So it looks like this. And you'll see it in all kinds of uh, Roman movies. It's on the shields in... Um, in Gladiator and in Ben-Hur and all these other movies. Um, but a lot of Christians, um, actually a lot of Jews, Christians, Islam, Islams, um, sorry, Muslims, a lot of people around the world don't realize that the Vatican is tracking the sun. So why are they tracking the sun? And um, also they're worshiping the sun. But um, that's a whole other story. So what does this, what does this key row right here represent? What is this symbol? Where did it come from? Well, I'm going to tell you. It actually goes back to Egypt. And a lot of Christians don't realize, and even Jews don't realize, that their religion begins in Egypt. And this is why there is the largest Egyptian obelisk in the world, right here, in the center of Rome. Um, this goes back to Abraham. It's Abrahamic thought, or Abrahamic philosophy, or Abrahamic religion. Uh, which was Egypt. So, the cross of Constantine, or the key row, is not a P. This is actually not a P. This is actually a representation of the sun at a certain point in the year, and it is said to, you know, move around the zodiac. So you have to imagine it moving in a circle all the way around, the zodiac like this. So this thing that looks like a P is actually the representation of the sun. So the entire St. Peter's Cathedral is mapping and tracking the solar year. I want you to ask yourself why. Why is the Vatican the largest sundial in the world? Bam. So I'm going to read a little bit to you um, of interesting stuff. Um, about the zodiac. So, you guys may have never heard of a fucus, but a fucus is a constellation. Um, and it's actually mentioned in the Bible. Um, I don't have the verse in front of me, so I can't tell you exactly what verse it's mentioned in at this time. But a fucus is the 13th sign in the zodiac, the one that is missing, so to speak. And um, it's missing because the solar year is based on the number 12. 12 signs of the zodiac, 12 hours in a day, and 12 hours in a night, so that's 24. So um, in order for 
this to work, they use the number 12. There's 12 apostles, um, which are just the posts of the zodiac. There's 12 systems in the body. There's 12 is a, a magic and sacred number in uh, numerology, astrology, and religion. So back to Ephucus. Ephucus is the 13th sign of the zodiac, and the Romans and Greeks put it into their stories and their myths. Ephucus stands on the head of Sagittarius, and the Bible talks about bruising the heel of Ephucus and bruising the head of Sagittarius. And these two symbols actually, when you see them together, one standing on the other, Ephucus standing on Sagittarius, they actually point to the center of our galaxy, the dead center of our galaxy. So you have to ask yourself, why are they tracking the sun? Well, the reason why is because they're actually tracking not only the center of our galaxy, but more importantly, um, they have a lot in their art and their symbology. They are tracking Orion, the Orion Nebula. Um, and you should see Danny Witten, his sites on YouTube. He has tons of information on mapping uh, Orion and the human body, which is what the Egyptians were doing. So all the temples in Egypt are correlated to the human body. Um, and the sun correlates to the human body. And this is what you can find uh, in the book by Thomas H. Burgoyne. Um, there's actually a lot of other people that, that speak of this too. George Carey and his wife. But um, Thomas H. Burgoyne is um, incredibly eloquent uh, in, the, in his book called The Light of Egypt. And it talks about the sine wave, which is this which runs through the human body. Um, and this is actually a light wave of the sun as it hits the earth. So this would be the earth. And as the light wave hits the earth at its angle, it creates a sine wave. And this is a microcosm of what's going on in the solar system. And this is the way light travels in waves or particles that regenerate into a wave. And this is actually where we get the solar cross, or the cross of Christianity, and the medicine wheel, um, the swastika comes from this sign. And so our cross that people worship with uh, people like Jesus on it is really referring to this sine wave. It's referring to the sine wave running through the human body. And this is part of the reason why the Vatican is mapping the sun, because they know that the sine wave runs through the human body, and they know that the sine wave um, on these four cardinal days right here affect human consciousness. They affect all the growth on the planet, all the water, the tides are actually affected by the, by the moon, which is actually powered and reflecting light from the sun. So this process is still a solar process. And so this sine wave that runs through the human body, so this would be your head, and the sine wave in, a, in an even smaller microcosm than the Earth microcosm, because light is just enfolding itself into uh, smaller and smaller and smaller points of singularity or infinity. And as it hits the body, it runs through the head and the body in the same, that's a terrible drawing, but in the same way sine wave runs through the body. And this is why all your zodiac signs, which are, you know, all along here, you got Virgo over here, you got Cancer here, Aries here, all, you know, and so on, they run through the human body. And you'll see this in, in all ancient religion, in Egyptian religion, um, there's old Egyptian zodiacs, which gave birth to this entire process of Abrahamic thought. Um, it actually goes back further than Abraham, but the Christians, Jews, and, and uh, Muslims all claim their, their fatherhood in, um, in Abraham. So that's where you got to begin for that history. Um, the Zodiac also tells, in the Bible actually, uh, the day of, for example, the day of Assumption of the Virgin, which is August 15th. And um, it states that in the Bible. The Virgin is the sign of Virgo because in August the sun blocks out Virgo. So when the sun is in that sign of Virgo, you cannot see it. 
And so they say in their, in their story, in their mythology, that, that the Virgo can't be seen, so she's taken up to heaven. And it's really just the story of the sun going through its yearly cycle and how it affects each zodiac sign, in this case, Virgo or the Virgin. Um, and then also Perseus, for example, in, me, in uh, Greek mythology, represents the sun just as Jesus or Jesus or Yeshua um, is the sun. Uh, so Perseus, being the sun in their myth, um, slays Medusa. So this would be, Medusa would be the nightfall, the, the night sky, which is down here, which is also sort of associated with darkness and winter. And then Perseus is the sun as he travels this sine wave or travels the zodiac. And uh, Perseus slays Medusa um, every morning. That's the Greek story. And so morning comes right here in Aries, when the sun arises. That's what Aries means, arise, which would be A-R-I-S-E, uh, Aries, arise. That's where we get that root word. And so the Virgin, back to the Virgin, she reappears on September 21st because the sun is now in the next sign, Libra, the scales right here. And she reappears. And it's stated in the Bible that she reappears on the 21st. Um, also, it tells us in Psalms, oh man, I can't spell. Well, in Psalms 83.15, it says, God is the sun and the shield. God is the sun and the shield. It tells you right there, directly. So, my question is, why is the Vatican charting the sun? Well, they're charting the Orion Nebula. They're charting the center of our galaxy, uh, which is, you can see through Ophiuchus, uh, the 13th sign of the zodiac. Um, and there's a lot of history in Abrahamic thought that comes from Egypt. And the Egyptians were tracking uh, the Orion Nebula because in the Orion, the constellation of Orion, Orion's belt, is in the Orion Nebula. And they believe that we actually came from there. And so this is part of the reason why the Vatican is tracking the Orion Nebula. Hope you guys enjoy it. And um, hopefully it just makes you guys think. Think a little bit differently about what you're, what you're exposed to and what you're not exposed to. What type of uh, information is available is out there. Just got to... Look for it. Got to read.